VCY America presents Crosstalk, a nationwide call-in program discussing issues that have an effect on our families, our communities, our churches, our nation, and our world. Crosstalk, an opportunity for you to voice your concerns for biblical principles. And now live by satellite and around the world on the Internet at vcyamerica.org. Here is today's Crosstalk. Well, thank you, Gordon Morris, and welcome to Crosstalk. Our privilege to have you join us today. Just a word to our local listeners or those within driving distance from uh, Milwaukee. Our uh, November rally, November the 5th at 7 p.m. at the Waukesha Expo, will be uh, featuring Jimmy D. Young, who will be our speaker, dealing with the subject examining current events in the light of Bible prophecy. The doors will open at 6 p.m., and also we have the wonderful privilege of having Dave and LaDonna Weston with us for music, uh, marimba, beautiful music. We've been working uh, in the studios today with them, and what a thrill. And they're going to be our musical guests for uh, the evening as well. So plan on that November the 5th, and if you're in the listening area across the nation, you can listen to us on vcyamerica.org. Just click on Listen Live, and 7 o'clock Central Time, 8 o'clock Eastern, and all that type of thing with the time zones. Uh, by the way, don't forget also, I believe uh, set your clocks back one hour as we return to daylight stand or no standard time from daylight savings time on November 5th, so just remember that, okay? Also, uh, for our friends up in the North Country, we've got Sunday Night Sing scheduled at the Cook Baptist Church on November 13th in Cook, Minnesota. At uh, It's November 13th at 6 p.m. Uh, for more information, you can call them at 218-666-5979. And uh, in Viroqua, Wisconsin, at the Bad Axe Independent Lutheran Church, located 10 miles west of Viroqua on State Highway 56, then three miles south on County Road N. For more information for that, Singspiration, 608 637 6692. Singspiration, what is it? It's when hundreds of people get together to sing the old gospel songs and hymns and choruses of the faith that have been kind of laid up on the shelf for some time. Okay, we're back here in the studio, and I want you to know, by the way, just for your information, some of you network listeners listen to Hilton Griswold. And today we presented him with a birthday cake. It's his 90th birthday. And I want to thank the hundreds of people that sent birthday cards to Hilton Griswold as he sat down to eat a pizza dinner along with the rest of the staff and cameramen. Out came the the case with all 300 cards and uh, greetings that I know are well received. So thank you for carrying this gentleman, 90 years old, and uh, to this week he's doing 30, that's right, 3-0 television programs for release on our TV station and across the country on numerous television stations and, of course, his uh, broadcast on the VCY network. Okay, enough shop talk. You're not going to believe this. I want you to listen. Turn up your radio just a bit. I want you to listen to a sound bite. Now, many people have been hearing this guy, uh, the gentleman who, who, who says your best life now. His name is Reverend Joel Osteen. And uh, he, of course, draws thousands of people to his television uh, church, whatever. And, but what does he preach? What is it that that makes distinctive uh, his ministry as to what he believes? Because you see, folks, doctrine and what people believe is vital. It can send you to heaven or to hell. I'm kidding you not. You you make the wrong mistake. You choose the wrong road. The Bible says, and you're in deep trouble. Well, I want you to hear the big issue, of course, today is talking about a presidential candidate, Mitt Romney, who happens to be a Mormon. Now, many of you are aware that Mormons believe that Jesus and Satan are kid brothers. That's that's not a a joke. That's fact. That's what they believe. But when you hear Mr. Osteen talking about Mormonism as Christian or Christianity, and you're talking about people inhabiting planets of their very own and 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 all of the and having multiple wives and, and and celestial wives and all this kind of thing, it makes you wonder. Well, I want you to listen to one of America's most popular television speakers, and what he said about Joel Osteen, and I want or uh, what he said here about Mormonism. Listen carefully as he speaks. Well, I believe that they are Christians. I don't know if it's the purest form of Christianity like I grew up grew up with, but 
you know what, I know Mormons. I hear Mitt Romney, and I've never met him, but I hear him say, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. He believe He's my Savior. You know, that's, the, that's one of the core issues. I'm sure there are other issues that we don't agree on. But, you know, I, you know, I can say the Baptists and the Methodists and the Catholics don't all agree on everything. So that's, that would be my take on it. Now, you heard it, but I, and probably don't believe what you heard. But I want you to hear, I'm going to play it one more time so you can soak up exactly what he said. Here it is. Listen carefully. Well, I believe that they are Christians. I don't know if it's the purest form of Christianity like I grew up, grew up with, but you know what? I know Mormons. I hear Mitt Romney, and I've never met him, but I hear him say, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. He believe He's my Savior. You know, that's, the, that's one of the core issues. I'm sure there are other issues that we don't agree on, but you know... Uh, you know, I can say the Baptists and the Methodists and the Catholics don't all agree on everything. So that's, that would be my take on it. Folks, my Bible says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Jesus very clearly said, not Joe Smith, and not Rutherford and, uh, and all the, the Russellites known as Jehovah's Witnesses or other cultic groups. No, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. We're going to talk right now to a man who is very familiar with Mormonism because he was one for 20 years of his adult life. He's a member of the Melchizedek Priesthood, a temple Mormon, and active in many church positions. And through crisis in his life, Ed met the real Jesus, and his life was changed forever. An active author, speaker, and evangelist, Ed has brought the light of biblical truth to uncountable thousands of the lost in spiritual darkness. And today, the work of Saints Alive Ministries has expanded worldwide and includes ministry to other groups, such as the Masonic Lodge as well. And it's a privilege to have with us today Ed Decker. Ed, God bless you. Good to have you with us. Well, I'm glad to be here, and it's quite a quite a uh, an issue that's been raising up over the last few weeks. And since the time that uh, I was on uh, a couple of weeks ago, I've had several thousand people contact me regarding mm. it uh, as a result of the program. It was overwhelming, and uh, we've gotten uh, many thousands of copies of my. Uh, chapter 12 of my most recent book. It's called The Mormon Plan for America and the Rise of Mitt Romney. And anybody who sends an email to ed at saintsalive.com, I'll be happy to send it to them. We've been, we've been slammed uh, mm. because it's such a serious issue. We have a man running for the presidency of the United States, a man who uh, wears uh, sacred undergarments with talismanic markings on him, who's sworn blood oaths uh, to uh, bring to to consecrate everything he has and everything he does to bringing in the kingdom of God, which is a, a Mormon theocracy into the United States, who's sworn total obedience to the prophet of the Mormon Church above all of his oaths of office and everything else in his life, and he is there planning and earning and working to become a god of his own planet with many goddess polygamous goddess wives and a harem, and this is the man that's running, and everybody from uh, John Hagee and James Robeson and Mike Evans and David Barton and Jay Sekulow, Pat Robertson, and now this uh, um, thing that uh, Joel Osteen has done has been, uh, has been being used by the Mormon Church to say, finally, we have verification and authenticity that we are, the, that we are a Christian group. Now, Pat Robertson is, is approving as a Christian as well? Absolutely. Good grief. He said, he said, I know, I know, uh, I, I can't quote him exactly, but he said recently, I, I know, uh, I know this Mitt Romney, and I know he loves the Lord, he's a Christian, he's, and he, he's a member of a Christian church, you know, so what are you going to do? <sighs> Pat should, you know, he's the same guy that just said we should divorce our Alzheimer spouses. Pat Robertson said that. Pat yeah, Robertson yeah. said, hey, you know, they've already left you, you know, biblically they've left you. You know, and my wife said, "Whatever happened to uh, in sickness and in health until death do us part?" Pat. Yeah. Well, hey, let's take them all and go with this thing because there's a lot of people again that are not aware. And with the thousands of contacts since you were here last, folks, I really want you to write the, your website. Give them the website address again Saints and the alive. email. Saintsalive.com. Saintsalive.com. All one word. And if you go click on the uh, Mormon section, you'll find um, the letter to. Uh, to Joel Osteen. I wrote a letter to Joel, and then I published it. It was called uh, Dear 
Pastor Joel Osteen, you should be ashamed. Hmm. Shame on you. Well, uh, can I read from it? Sure can. You've given the enemies of the cross a great victory, either through sheer ignorance of the word or your apparent desire to never offend anyone. Regardless of their sins, you have handed the Mormons a huge PR gift. You have insulted and denigrated the many former Mormons like me who spent their lives bringing Mormons the truth to the real Jesus who died for their sins on Calvary. You've defined our ministries and my life's work as worthless. You emphatically state that Mormons are Christians. You are completely ignorant of the fact that Mormons have taught as a foundational doctrine that the creeds of all the Christian churches are abominations in the Mormons' God's sight. Wow. You go on for two pages, man. I don't have the time to read it all, but uh, can people get a copy of this letter? They can get a copy of it. All they have to do is just go to my website. It's right on the front page. I put it right on the front page. Uh, just go right, go down the front page a bit, and it'll pop right up there for you. And you're welcome to copy it and send it out to anyone you like. It's it's something that needs to be said. We have evangelical pastors who are playing the politically correct game, and they're letting people fall into the pit of hell because of it. A man spoke. Uh, I got an email from a, a parishioner of of uh, Joel Osteen's, and he said he spoke to Joel recently about this, and. Joel said, "Would you something along the lines? Would you rather hear about hell or heaven?" No, oh, you know, it's one uh, or the I'm other. Preach hell. Well, I I know I've heard his father preach hell, and <laughs> and preached it tough, and people got on their knees and called out to God and confessed their sins and asked forgiveness and turned their lives over to Jesus. <clears throat> but this guy is a is a self help and a and a happy boy guru. He will not. He will not. He was, he was on, this is the third time now that he's done this. He was on in 2005, and he was talking with Larry King. Larry King, of course, is married to a Mormon woman. Oh, boy. And uh, even though he's Jewish, he's married to a Mormon woman. She's active in the church. And uh, he asked them about Mormonism, and he gave the same story. You know, I'm, I'm not the judge. Well, are they saved? Uh, that's for God to determine. You know, he had a very good opportunity to say this is what salvation is, biblically. He wouldn't do it. And he, he waffled on it. And then we barraged him with books, letters, DVDs, phone calls. People really rallied around and gave Joel Osteen all the information he needed to understand that they were not a Christian group. In 2008, when Romney was running, uh, trying to get the nomination uh, in the last election, he did the same thing again. And he again said that Mormons are Christian. And he again got barraged with materials. So this is third time you're out, Joel. Wow. That again, the address uh, the address for the emails is saintsalive.com, or is it .org? .com, and, dot .com. And if they want a copy of the, um, uh, the, the Romney thing, just send me an email. Just say, Ed, at Saints Alive, Chapter 12. That's all you have to say. I'll know what you're, what you're asking for. Now, folks, what we're talking about today is only one small segment of the issues, but there's so many of you need to understand what Mormonism is all about. As we're coming out, there's a book called The Godmakers, written by Ed Decker, our guest, and Dave Hunt. And it's available through Crosstalk, a special gift of $17. And you can get a copy of this, which is a un- up- it's updated and expanded. So uh, give a call to 800-729-9829, and Mary will take your address. Thanks for joining us. We'll be right back in a minute. Genesis with Dr. John Morris, creation scientist with ICR. Dr. Morris, could the Big Bang have been the original creation event in Genesis 1? Chris, it has become popular among evangelical Christians to look at the Big Bang as the original creation event, but I find some problems here. Scientifically, there are huge problems with the Big Bang. It's an unscientific idea, just a mathematical model. We don't see what we should see if the Big Bang really happened. It's just a solution to the relativity equations. But maybe there's a better understanding. We have a man here on staff who does a lot of work in this area to try to discern just what God did back in Genesis. God doesn't give us all the details, but what he has told us forms a basis for a mathematical model which is more biblical and more scientific, much better than the Big Bang idea. And that's the way it is back in Genesis. Do you have a topic that you'd like to hear on Back to Genesis? Just email us at genesis at icr.org.
Mormons are Christians? Well, Joel Osteen said so, and there are others out there. Uh, you mentioned another interesting individual, and Ed, this is kind of shocking. You said uh, Jay Seculo has indicated that Mormons are Christians. Well, he was on he was on uh, the the, the uh, team for uh, Mitt Romney in two thousand and eight, mm-hmm. and uh, we contacted them, and they said <clears throat> again, he says they're more. He says he's born again. He says he serves the Lord. That's good enough for me. I'm not going to uh, challenge a man's <laughs> testimony. But the key to this uh, is very simple. Uh, the Mormons, and I know this because I was one, and I did it as a Mormon. We we did what we call well, we didn't really go around and have a label for it, but we it's basically what I call Mormon speak. Mm-hmm. Now I say Jesus, you <clears throat> say Jesus. You mean you mean God come in the flesh, the Jesus of of, of John one. You know, the, was the Word, and the Word was God. Was God? You mm-hmm. know, and you begin to talk about Jesus. And and but when I say Jesus as a Mormon, he's my elder brother, the brother of Lucifer. He gained the position of of uh, savior, and he's not the full savior, but uh, he gave he gained his position on earth as the Messiah uh, by a vote of a council of gods who sat down and listened to his plan and his brother Lucifer's plan on how to run the earth. He got the vote. And he comes down, but he only his his death on Calvary only gives us physical resurrection to be judged for our works at the end days. Now, he suffered the Mormons say for our sins in the Garden of Gethsemane, sweating great drops of blood for us, and we have personal salvation contingent upon our obedience to the laws and the ordinances of the gospel. Now. Ephesians says they took the, that Jesus took the laws and then the ordinances that were against us, and he moved them out of the way, nailing them to the cross. There is never, never a cross anywhere in a Mormon church, on a Mormon church, on a Mormon church property, in a Mormon temple, on a Mormon leader's around, as, as a jewelry, nothing, zero, because they can't deal with the cross. No Mormon alive, including Mitt Romney, knows if he's personally saved until... He goes to the judgment seat when the Mormon God, the Mormon Jesus, and Joseph Smith determine if his works are enough to move him up to Godhood. That, when they say Jesus and they say God and they talk about salvation, they use the same words, but they have far different meanings to them. So when the Mormon's looking at you, he says, oh, yes, I love the Lord. Well, I know you love the Lord. I know you want to serve Jesus, but you're, you've been blinded by the leaders, and the scriptures say in Isaiah 9, I'll, uh, 916, that the leaders of them shall cause them to fall, and those that fall, uh, should, I've just lost the scripture, <laughs> or, you know, they go to hell. Yeah. Well, Ed, when we when we see the threat of these uh, spurious doc- doctrines and false teachings, uh, what can what can we say, and I don't mean this in any indicting way, but it isn't often, and I challenge many of our listeners to remember, how often have you heard a message in your church defining the erroneous teachings, the unbiblical teachings of Mormonism? Or is it relegated to maybe a, a, a weeknight service where people come together only to uh, those that are interested and some who feel it's too complex to deal with don't even show up? But guess what? Every one of us is accountable for what we believe and what we understand. And I, I, I remember in preparing for ministry, one of the college courses I had dealt with the cults. And, of course, they had a book dealing with Russellism or, or Jehovah's Witnesses and, and Charles Taze, Taze Russell back in the beginning of that. And uh, when we think of then uh, Christian science, Mary Baker Eddy, and some of these other belief systems that were out there, but usually it was, a, you know, three or four pages, and that was it. But when we talk about understanding what Mormons believe, it fills more than three or four pages, Ed. You lived it for 20 years. I lived it for 20 years, and I believed it for 20 years, and I accidentally got saved, and I, I thought I was going to be the better Mormon. But the thing that happened when I got saved was that the Holy Spirit entered my life. Oh, praise and God. And I, ha- I had a... Uh, I had a uh, insatiable desire to read the Bible, even though for 20 years I carried it under my arm, and I used little scriptures as proof text 
uh, all the time out of it. Uh, I didn't sit down and actually read it, like consume it like like manna, like food. You know, I mean, I, I just I use it uh, as I was directed by the instructions from Salt Lake City. When I began to read the Bible, I began to find out that there only was one God, and the job was taken, and I'm not, I don't have a chance. I found there was no God before God, there was no God after him, and that God wasn't some God who was a man on some other planet who earned his godhood and got given Earth as his, as his trophy uh, planet for living a good life. Uh, I read that God was before time began and shall be after time ends, and that he was outside of his creation, not part of creation. And so I began to see these things, and I began to question my leaders, and they told me to be quiet, that I was losing my testimony, <laughs> and if I didn't knock off that kind of talk. And then when I, when I got into the New Testament, of course, the, you know, you slug through the Old Testament the first few times. Uh, but to me, you know, I mean, I think I read Ecclesiastes six times, and then when I got into the New Testament, I think I, I think I spent, you know, I think I probably read Ephesians 12 times straight through. Uh, there was so much meat in there, and then again in Hebrews, when I found out about what the real priesthood of Christ was, uh, rather than my priesthood, in which I had, was one of the many who had usurped the, the Melchizedek priesthood of Jesus Christ, our high priest. I mean, when I realized those things and began to talk about it, I was I was obviously excommunicated for heresy. <laughs> well, folks, the issue of Mormonism and various other cultic belief systems. Uh, uh, ends up uh, too many people somehow just think that being a Christian is a label. We put the label on, but doctrine means nothing. Well, I'm a Christian. That means I don't have a bone in my nose or big ivory uh, discs in my ears, or I am not a cannibal, or I don't uh, you know run half naked through the jungle, or uh, go in in, in uh, you know narrow hollowed out log boats uh, to bring bring war against some other tribe. No. That is, that's paganism at its max. But Christianity is not a flavor. It is a personal experience with the very Son of God. And the term God is not just a label or a job assignment. God is supreme. God is all and in all. And somehow or other, as Christians, and sadly today with the carnal influence of a, of a world headed for hell, that the soft attitude toward Christian doctrine... There are people who shrug their shoulders. In fact, I remember a young teenager some time back came to us and said, Doctrine, is that, is that, is that something that I should be concerned about? Add your response. <laughs> the problem is, is, is that it's, it's hard to put in words. I mean, uh, I can go and speak at a Christian church. I don't care which one it is. And I can look across an audience and I can see those who are saved and are, uh, uh, you know, they're dead in Christ, but yet they live. Mm-hmm. And those that are there for the social and and, the, and 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 some spiritual strength, but who haven't really grasped to be one with Christ. Uh, and and I can do it in in any denomination. And you see throughout the body of Christ the believers, mm-hmm. uh, and the believers are a small portion of the body of what we call the body of Christ. And you know the people in your church who are the fireballs. You know the ones in your church who are who are giving and praying and and serving and working and and when they're in the streets, the, the, the words of the Bible come out of their mouths. And and those are the people who have figured it out. And the problem that we have today, Vic, is that the that the uh, the main evangelical bodies are now becoming what I call seeker friendly. And they don't want to offend people. They'll say, "Well, we want to just preach hope on Sundays, and 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 uh, and maybe on Wednesdays we'll get into the real meat." But now they're, most of them have canceled Wednesdays, and so what they're getting is hope. And their crowds are coming, and the music has changed. You were talking about this this gospel uh, sing along, man. I tell you what, I'll, I wish I was close mm. because I'm getting tired of these little ditty songs that we sing in our even my own church. It's up on the screen. And, you know, and today you don't even bring your Bible to church if you don't, if you, unless you're a fanatic, because by the time the pastor utters the scriptural reference, it's up on the board in six different, six different translations. It's time to take a serious look at our beliefs. And folks, we're talking with Ed Decker today and the world that is being swept off its feet with a, an undefined religion called Mormonism. And it is time. Do we sacrifice, I mean, 
you know, they say, get you want to get uh, to the important things, check the money trail. And, of course, everybody's being pinched in the economy. But is the answer to go to someone who is a pagan uh, in their spiritual beliefs, who is literally planning on being the, the, the god of a planet, and one who does secretly believe in polygamy? Oh, on the outside, of course, it's considered illegal, but it's going on all over the place. Uh, Ed Decker, our guest today, and when we come back at the halfway point, I'd like to have some of you people call, and if you want to disagree with him or challenge him, it's your privilege, uh, and, and, and talk with him. Ask him the questions, yeah. because not too far down the road is going to be a time to make a decision on our national leadership, and the question is, does it matter to you? Does the issue of what a man believes have any reflection on, on who it is that leads us? Ed, am I, am I being too radical here? No, no, you got to say it. Um, you know, we've 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 been warned in the in in the Bible, and we've been warned by the the the, the apostles. We've been warned by Jesus that in the end times, false teachers will come. They, they'll fool even the very elect of God, and and they'll bring doctrines of demons. And then this is mm-hmm. what the doctrines of Mitt Romney and the Mormon Church are: they're doctrines of demons. Folks, we're going to give you a phone number. We can open up those lines right now. I'm pressing the button, and it's clear. If you'd like to join and talk with our guest, Ed Decker, a man who spent 20 years of his life among people. I'm sure they were nice people, Ed. I mean, they are great people. Wonderful and, and, you people. Know, they're not the enemies of God, Vic. They're, they're, they're victims. And, and, and they're, they're clean cut. They avoid uh, all of the... The ugly, dirty, messy stuff, like uh, even what they, the foods and, and various aspects of respectful living. You ever see Mormon missionaries going down the street uh, on a bicycle or a couple of young men in their 20s and a little gold patch on their pocket and they're, they're out as missionaries? You won't see them in a bar. You won't see them smoking no. a cigarette. But you know something? How many, how many evangelical young people are out there knocking on doorbells at t- age 20? Or a commitment. Well, the Mormons have over fifty thousand of them out there, but unfortunately, the, out of the two hundred and fifty thousand they convert every year, there about two hundred plus thousand of them are Christians mm-hmm. who don't know the Word of God. Our telephone number is eight hundred seven three three nine eight two nine. If you join us and talk with Ed Decker, maybe you have questions about Mormonism. Maybe you're one of those people that's been fooled or confused and saying, "Well, is it really that bad, or is it really that serious?" Or is it something we should consider? I mean, I've had them knock at my door. You have perhaps as well. Very sincere people. But as well said here, Ed, indicating that they're victims of a system that literally can destroy their soul. Amen. Our telephone number 800 <clears throat> The lines are already jammed, Ed. And so we're going to be taking a break here in just a few moments. And we'll be right back. When we come back, be ready. And as soon as you hear us terminate one call, use the speed dial to call in. It's 800 no, 733 800-733-9829. We'll be right back. This is Crosstalk on the VCY America Radio Network. Perhaps you're a person that is active on the issues of today. And while these things are necessary, there is nothing more important than your personal relationship to Jesus Christ. Have you met Him as your personal Savior? All the issues we face on earth pale in comparison to the real issue of your relationship to God. What really matters is eternity, and we hope that you're ready for it. I'd like to send you a brochure that is absolutely free. This will help you to consider this very important matter. It's entitled, Where Will You Spend Eternity? It's brief, it's to the point, and it helps you to understand the urgency of having a personal relationship to Jesus Christ. If you'd like to receive a free copy of this pamphlet, right now pick up your phone and call 800-729-9829 and ask for the brochure. That's 800-729-9829. Call now. (laughs) 
Okay, welcome back to Crosstalk, where Ed Decker is our guest today, a man who spent 20 years of his life in the Mormon Church, a man who's devoted the rest of his life to to sharing with people the truth of God's Word and how they can be released from the bondage of a of a system that literally has them captive. And uh, he spent 20 years of his life in the Mormon Church. He was a member of the Melchizedek Priesthood, a Temple Mormon, active in many church positions. But God reached down and saved Ed, and his love for the Lord today is without question. Now, let me just share this again. I played this at the beginning of the program, and I'll play it again. A lot of these people, they call themselves Christian pastors or evangelicals or even uh, some of the new wind that is blowing out of the theological forest. I want you to listen what what Mr. Osteen has said. I mean, listen carefully as as he says, Joel Osteen talking about Mormonism when he was interviewed. Here is his answer. Well, I believe that they are Christians. I don't know if it's the purest form of Christianity like I grew up grew up with, but you know what, I know Mormons, I hear Mitt Romney, and I've never met him, but I hear him say, I believe Jesus is the Son of God, He believe He's my Savior. You know, that's, the, that's one of the core issues. I'm sure there are other issues that we don't agree on. But, you know, I, you know, I can say the Baptists and the Methodists and the Catholics don't all agree on everything. So that's, that would be my take on it. Well, in my understanding, the core issue is the blood of Jesus Christ. And there's no question about that. Ed, we've got the phones lined up right here, and we're going to go to Bill in Florida. Bill, you're on the air with Ed Decker. Hello, Ed. Hello, Vic. Yes, sir. Just wanted to make a brief comment, just an observation about the church in America today. There are three kinds of believers in it. Believers, non-believers, and (laughs) make-believers. Wow. Got it. Well said. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. God bless you both. Appreciate that from Florida. Let's go to Mobile, Alabama. We're talking to Richard. And our telephone number, we've got a spare line now, 800-733-9829. Richard, Mobile, Alabama, you're on. Yeah, I just want to say also the verse comes to mind is uh, the, the Joe Osteen called Jesus a liar because Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody, nobody comes to the Father but by me. And I also want to say that everybody says that Joe Osteen's a nice guy. And that all these false prophets, now, I, got, I got news for you. My Bible says there's none good, no, not one. We're all wicked liars to the bone. We hide behind our deceitful hearts, but we're not good people. And if anybody thinks they're good, then they're not going to be able to get in. they got to come as a wicked, begging sinner, you know, like the prostitutes, the drug addicts. That's why the Lord says those people will enter the kingdom before all these rich guys will. Because they see their need. They're already at the bottom of the, of the bucket. You know what I mean? Thanks. Amen. I remember just uh, the day I got saved, uh, just weeping and weeping and weeping at the, at, the, at the bottom of the cross. You know what I mean? I just, it, it, something breaks in you, and you lay it all down, and, and you say, Oh, God, take me and break me down to the clay that I once was, and you build me back to be what you want me to be. Clean me out. Just clean me out. Get rid of all this stuff. And then he does it. He takes you and he rebuilds you into be the man or the woman that he wants you to be. It's submission and giving up and letting all that sin lay at the foot of the cross. We're going to Tom in Fort Scott, Kansas. Tom, you're on the air. Yes, sir. Uh, how are you guys today? Fine, sir. Good. Uh, a, few, a few things here. Uh, you know, like Obama, he told exactly what he was going to be, and he's pretty much proven it. Um, as far as the Mormon church is concerned to me it's the islam of america absolutely and, uh, joe this mr olstein he i don't know if he i don't think he knows jesus christ as lord and savior because i mean it's just not right what he's doing well, the core issue he's talking about uh, i mean what yeah. is the core issue the core issue is the blood of christ well That's he won't right. say the blood of christ because it may offend somebody yeah so, so and, he, he he stopped being his father's son, because his father, John Osteen, preached, you know, sin, hell, repentance, oh, the blood of man. Christ, the cross of Jesus, and you won't get it. That's not a cross up there that, mm-hmm. that Joel Osteen stands in front of. It's the world twirling around behind him. Yeah. And there's one other thing, too. 
I left the Pentecostal church because there was there was nobody I could find preaching the true word. I went to a Baptist church, and the pastor's preaching. I um, mean, he was preaching from his heart. He died at 53 years old. The guy taking his place. I took him out to eat one day, and he said, "Why did you start coming to this church?" And I said, "Because the pastor was preaching the truth." And he said, "That's not a very good reason." Uh, Things are changing, aren't they? Oh, the wrong direction, my friend. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate the call. Got to move quickly. Grand Forks, North Dakota. Ben, you're on the air with Ed Decker. Hello, Ben. Yes, hi. Uh, Gentlemen, thanks for taking my call. Uh, Great topic. I really appreciate you uh, taking this one on. Um, I grew up in a community with uh, a lot of Mormons, had a lot of Mormon friends, uh, attended a number of Mormon activities and stuff. Um, And, in fact, at one point I was taken to the point where I I really made some serious uh, considerations about joining the church. But, thankfully, I had some uh, spiritual counsel that just um, kept me from going that way. But I distinctly remember one day, uh, one of my closest friends that we're still close to this day, um, we were going um, on a family trip, and as I, I did often with them, and his, his dad turned around and looked at me and said, Ben, um, you know, we talk about our faith quite a bit. Is there a reason that you don't share your faith with us? And, you know, I'm, I'm almost 50 years old. I was, I was in high school at the time, and that, that statement still haunts me to this day. Mm. And um, to intensify things, I just got a phone call last week from this friend who told me that his mother had, had passed uh, a couple weeks back, and but, you know, shouldn't be uh, in despair at all because she, of course, is reunited with him and, uh, and going on to their celestial world and, and doing all the things that Mormons believe happens uh, in that occurrence. So Ed, i got a question for you, my friend. Um, I've done a lot of studying about the Mormon Church. I, I know it's a cult. I know it's a false belief. If there was one thing that you would recommend that I um, shared with my friend, what would you say? Well, you know, it's really hard. <clears throat> but I, when I have a, you know, just five minutes with a Mormon, again, you can't challenge your friend because they're trained that they have the truth and you don't. So you have a little bit of the truth. So they have a Gnostic faith, and what you have to do is ask them uh, a question in the manner of, can you help me understand, you know, how your mother and father are united <coughs> uh, in marriage uh, in, the, in the next life? And, and let him begin to share that. And then you can say, well, you know, I think, you know, the, the, uh, do they know that do they have assurances when they died that, they, that this happened? And they don't because they will not know until the end days when they are judged before the great white throne judgment, which incidentally is the judgment of the damned according to the Bible. But they they won't know, so he can't say that he knows exactly where his mother's going, because aren't they going to have to be have their works compared to their to their transgressions and so forth, and they don't know what mm-hmm. kingdom they're going to go to yet? So if you begin to ask questions about explain it, but I you know, and then let your Bible knowledge say, but the Bible says, help me understand that discrepancy between what you're saying and what the Bible says, and then he'll say, well, hmm. you know, we have holy prophets. It, it'll open up the door for conversation. You'll find out where his where the link of his testimony is. It may be in the priesthood, it may be in the prophet, it may be in the Book of Mormon, and that gives you an opportunity then to hone down in those areas. It's not an easy job. Prayer is your number one tool. Thank you, Ben, from Grand Forks, North Dakota. We're going to go to Mike in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Mike, you're on the air. Hello, Mike. Hello. Uh, I'm talking about Mormonism. Uh, One of the best, the most concise uh, uh, descriptions of Mormonism I've come across uh, is uh, on an episode of the uh, the cartoon show South Park. Now I'm not giving a blanket endorsement to South Park, but uh, uh, like I say that that episode they they did treat it uh, and uh, quite factually and very succinctly. And then every once in a while I had to run a a runner underneath you and know, saying this is uh, what Mormons actually believe. Uh, they also have a, a similar episode on Scientology. Well, if you go, if you rather than going to the South Park, go to my website, Saints Alive, and right up, 
right up on the right hand corner under the under the banner click on that video there and you'll get a six minute uh, animation video of everything the mormons believe in six minutes flat and that has been viewed uh, on the many youtubes and god tubes and harry's tube and all the other tube things on on the web virally over ten million views that shows what mormonism believes take a look at it uh, and you'll see exactly what they believe uh, Every statement out of every bit of the mouth. I haven't seen the the uh, South Park one uh, uh, for obvious reasons, but uh, the Mormons now uh, are laughing about the the, the uh, ridicule that they go through uh, in the uh, um, the play called uh, the Book of Mormon. I've seen a few excerpts of it, and uh, they basically ridicule the Mormons and the whole Mormon thing, um, and sh- and basically show the the errors of Mormonism as far as Christianity is concerned. But now the Mormons in their new emergent church uh, program, uh, now they sort of laugh at it and laugh at themselves, and it's fine. Uh, It's a strange world. Now, folks, over 300,000 copies of the book, The Godmakers, have been published. Now, there's a new updated version. Dave Hunt and Ed Decker, our guest, teamed up together and produced this shocking expose of what the Mormon church really believes. You need to have it and for many reasons. One, you have to understand, as you consider national leadership, if there's someone that's a Mormon, there are several, I think, that are, uh, and find out what this book has to say about what they believe. Number two, and it exposes it from a man who, for 20 years, Ed Decker, our guest today, was a Mormon, a temple Mormon, meaning that he was involved in literally the the entire political and religious uh, operations within the Mormon church. And so the book is called The Godmakers. If you call our number, 800 729 9829 or 800-729-WVCY. That's uh, the the number to call, 729-9829. And order, the area code is 800, so it's toll-free from anywhere. And get a copy, it's $17, a gift to Crosstalk, and we'll send you as our gift a copy of The God Makers. So if you would, pick up your phone and call today. Now, Ed Decker, your, uh, your address again is... Uh, saintsalive.com, saintsalive.com, or you want to write a letter to ed at saintsalive.com. Ed at saintsalive.com. You can ask for the chapter 12 of my book, uh, My Kingdom Come, The Mormon Quest for Godhood. I wanted to add uh, something there, Vic. Uh, I don't normally um, uh, get reminded of it, but but, um, Dave Hunt is one of the great apologists of our time. Um, and when we did that book in the the first edition of the book in the early '80s, it was the number one bestseller for probably six, eight, ten months, and then was was in the top ten for four or five years. Uh, and it's been revised several times and updated. But but Dave was a meticulous uh, uh, researcher, and anything that I came up with uh, on my understanding of Mormonism from the twenty years he wanted absolute. Lockdown documentation. You've got it, folks. We're coming up on a break, and we'd love to have you join us. Our telephone number is 800 73398. We'll be right back in 60 seconds. For the Worldview Weekend Minute, I'm Brandon House. Our website's worldviewweekend.com. Today, contemplative prayer, breath prayers, centering prayers, soaking prayers, whatever you want to call it, is being promoted even inside, quote, evangelical churches, end quote. In fact, Richard Foster, a writer who teaches contemplative prayer, talks about how you can actually literally encounter Jesus. Is this biblical? No, it's not biblical at all. Nowhere in the scriptures do we see that we are to physically encounter Jesus through our prayer life. Nowhere do we see that we're to enter into the silence, enter into the quietness, and encounter God, or encounter Jesus. In fact, 1 Peter 1, verse 8 does not say, whom we see whenever we want through visualization. It says, whom having not seen, you love, though you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible, full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation 
of your souls, end quote. Christians are not commanded to try to physically see Jesus. Okay, and welcome back to Crosstalk, where our lines are jammed, literally. And we're going to go right now to John in Mobile, Alabama. And uh, John, you're on the air with Ed Decker. Go right ahead, please. Hello, yes. John. Are you talking to me? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, this is John in Mobile. And I'd like to say God bless to both of you men in this program, uh, Crosstalk and Holding Up uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. And, Ed, uh, I'm, I believe there, uh, and perhaps you've jumped uh, to a different level when you attack a person personally like Joel Osteen or any other person uh, by name. Uh, the reason I say that is, in your own words, you thought that after the Holy Spirit brought Jesus into your heart and you were born again, first of all, you thought you'd be a better woman for a while until the Holy Spirit, who reveals all truth to us, began to open up your heart to the Lord. To the Word. To the Word. To the Word, exactly. Exactly. And the Lord Jesus is the Word, by the way. And... uh, uh, that's just my thinking. Uh, I've sat under Joel Osteen's preaching for many years when I worked in Texas, and uh, I don't have anything negative to say about him. He doesn't preach the uh, fire and brimstone gospel, but he certainly reaches a lot of people that are uh, down on themselves. He uplifts them, and I believe that God uh, is showing his blessing of his ministry uh, just if you just even look at the size of it, that's all you have to do, and look at his face. Well, we've contacted him, and we've tried to sit down with him, and we've sent letters to him, and we've done it three different times, and people have gone in and talked to him, and they've been rebuked for even bringing up uh, these kinds of issues. So at, when he stands up and goes on public television uh, on, on, on a secular uh, uh, system and transmits that nationwide, and then the Mormon Church begins to use it, someone with knowledge needs to speak strongly about it and say, no, Pastor, no, I'm sorry, you can't say that and just get away with it anymore. One thing other, sorry, uh, that's John, what I do. Yeah, John, I want to add this to you as well. John, you said that uh, it was an attack. It wasn't an attack. There was no attack involved at all. We're using his well, own words, John. If John, if you let me finish, we we used his own we used his own words, uh, John. Okay, I'm going to have to fade you down until I finish saying what I'm going to say. Okay, we have quoted him. His his words tell us what he said, and the Bible tells us. Even even Paul warned people that who are preaching false doctrine that they should be marked, that people should know them. So if you have someone who's teaching a false, non-biblical doctrine, what's wrong with pointing out who they are? Well, why didn't, I, why didn't Jesus just say that the woman that was thrown to his feet who was taken in adultery, uh, she was obviously incorrect. Sir, she was already admitted as a sinner. She was already, this is a man who claims to be an oracle of God, who is, who is claiming he God's truth. He's speaking truth. And he's speaking a lie that's going to deceive many people. Also, John, there's one statement you said, which which was really rather interesting. You said, by the virtue of the size of his ministry, it proves the validity of it. The Bible tells us that broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be that go in thereat, but the road is narrow for those who will come to the Lord in a biblical way. I think he's a tree planted by the rivers of water. Oh, I, see. I think you can see uh, the evidence in the fruit that he's buried. Well, that's obvious, and the fruit is rather confusing. And I'd really like to see him now that he's been challenged so publicly by so many people now. I'd like to see the man actually stand up and respond to us rather than slink back behind his smile. Let's go to West Dallas, Wisconsin, and talk to Brad. Brad, you're on the air. Hi, Vic. Uh, that was an excellent response. Um, I tell you, when you played that sound bite of Osteen talking... Mm-hmm. I had to remind myself how sad this was because I was laughing at the time, but it is sad. We do not have, he was talking about, oh, the purest form of Christianity that somebody had. I said, we don't have pure and impure forms. We don't have light, regular, and heavy-duty Christianity. We've got Jesus Christ. And when they take Jesus and, and say that he is Satan's brother, 
They have taken the second member of the triune God, the Creator, and made him a created being. And mock I've, them. I have a problem with that. That's blasphemy. Mm-hmm. So, Amen. Amen. And, and another thing, just for the, the last caller, the number truth is not determined by the number of people who believe it. Not very many people believe the truth when uh, Noah built the ark. Only mm-hmm. eight people did, including him. Thanks, Brad. Thank you. Wow. Powerful stuff. Okay, got one more call, and I think we're going to get that in there. Carl in Lake Delton, Wisconsin, on line four. Carl, you're on the air. Very quickly. Yeah, every every call falls down on who God is or what the blood of Jesus represents. And to the Mormon Jesus, the, the blood of, uh, in, in the Journal of Discourses, it says that Christ's blood can never atone for all of our sins. It's his blood plus our own. Now, the Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags. Our blood is worthless. We have a different Jesus here. The Mormon Jesus is not the Jesus of the Bible. Mm. He's, 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 it's a cult. Clear and, clear and simple. Amen. Ed, last minute and a half here. National leadership, whether it be Mitt Romney or any other but other person with the Mormon background, what impact could that have on our, on our future of this country? Well, you've got to remember that they believe that this country's uh, constitution and our form of government is going to fail. It's going to hang by a thread. And it's going to, it's going to require the, the elders of Israel, the Mormon leaders, to come in and save it. And then they will begin to operate a theocratic government in the United States. Uh, when they get the, the government, the, the ecclesiastic uh, uh, government and the, and the secular government working together, they have a, they have a temple in Washington, D.C. that has the furniture in place for this prophet to preside over this government. When that happens and we begin to move into that theocratic form of communism or socialism, then Jesus can return, and he will return to a soon-to-be-built temple in Independence, Missouri, where he will live and reign for the thousand years while the Mormons take over the world. That's what that was Glenn Beck was doing in Israel. He wasn't there for fun. He was there to sanctify. They believe they're not only the only true Christians, but they're the only true Jews. You can read about it in the Mormon section of my website, saintsalive.com. If there's any reason to notice how the Dominionists and the Mormons are linking up, because taking dominion happens to be an important element within the Mormon belief, and now you're having the Dominion theologists doing the same thing. And, and, the, and the Muslims have the same thing with their caliph, the, the end times caliph. Ed Decker, our guest today, it's uh, saintsalive.com. Go to his website, and also if you want to write to him, ed at saintsalive.com. Ed, God bless you. God bless you for letting us speak the truth on your program, brother. And folks, get that book, The God Makers. Call right now, 800-729-9829. That's it. Thanks for joining us on Crosstalk. You've been listening to Crosstalk via satellite and the Internet from BCY America. Views expressed may or may not be those of this station. For a CD of today's program, send a donation of $6 or more to VCY Tape Ministry, 3434 West Kilbourne Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53208. Or download by RSS or podcast from crosstalkamerica.com. And join us again for Crosstalk.